Yo, what's going on guys? My name is Hollow, and today we are finally going over my Apex Legends settings. I'm going to be going over all of my gameplay settings, why I use them, and why you might want to use them as well. I'm also going to be talking about my launch options and auto exec, as well as my NVIDIA 3D settings and my BenQ monitor settings. We have a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and start going over my gameplay settings. So for my interact prompt style, I like to keep it on compact because the compact interact prompt style looks like this and the default prompt style looks like this. You can see how much bigger it is and how much unnecessary information there is on the screen. I just don't like having this giant flag come off the item. So I like to keep it on compact in the name of reducing visual clutter. For my button hints, I like to keep these off. And the only reason why I like to keep them off is because I like to keep my UI as clean as possible. The only reason why I would ever turn these on is if I needed a little reminder on uh, what keybinds my abilities were bound to if I changed my keybinds or something like that. But I don't really plan on doing that anytime soon, so I just keep them off. So for my crosshair damage feedback, I personally like to keep this off most of the time, but there are a few reasons that you can use to justify keeping it off. And there are a few reasons that you can use to justify keeping it on, uh, whether it's on with or without the shield icon, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to show you guys some of those reasons. One of the reasons to keep crosshair damage feedback on is because it allows you to be more in tune with the center of your screen. You can see with weapons like the wingman, there's visual recoil whenever you're aimed down sights and shooting. The reticle is not always going to be in the center of your screen. So having those hit markers serve as a sort of a reminder of where the center of your screen is helps a lot, especially at close range uh, from my personal experience. Um, this obviously doesn't apply to just the wingman. This also can apply to something like the Mastiff or any other weapon that comes out that has visual recoil that prevents you from having the reticle in the center of your screen at all times to use. The concept of having crosshair damage feedback enabled for the specific purpose of allowing you to be more in tune with the center of your screen also applies to hip firing as well. You can see that with my hip fire reticle on the Volt, it's pretty big, but when I shoot, there's a little bit of a tighter sort of temporary reticle that appears uh, that I can use to track my opponent. However, just like there are reasons to keep it on, there are also reasons to keep it off. The main reason why I like to keep crosshair damage feedback off is because it produces a little bit of visual clutter. Although crosshair damage feedback can help you be a little bit more in tune with the center of your screen, it does produce that little bit of visual clutter and it's entirely possible to track a target with the center of your screen without that. It just helps a little bit. And so that's one of the main reasons why I keep it off. Whenever I shoot somebody, the only things that I really need are the damage indicator, the sound of me hitting their armor, cracking their armor, hitting them on flesh or knocking them. Those are really all I need. I don't need any sort of visual feedback on my crosshair to have fun. Next, let's talk about my damage numbers. So I have these on stacking. And the reason why I have them on stacking is whenever I shoot somebody, I know exactly how much I hit them for. If I have my damage numbers off, I'm basically intentionally denying myself information. Although that does make the game look more clean and look more minimal, which I like, I don't think it's justified to have damage numbers off in a game where your opponents don't have health bars, unlike the bots in the firing range. In terms of floating damage numbers, I just don't really see the point in using them. A giant stack of numbers detailing how much damage you've done per bullet doesn't really tell me anything. And it doesn't even really tell me anything whenever I use them in conjunction with the stacking damage numbers. I just don't really see too much of a point in using anything other than stacking. It gives you information and the information that it gives you is valuable. For my ping opacity, I like to use faded. This is again in the name of reducing visual clutter. For my obituaries, I like to keep these on. This is just a fancy term for the kill feed. If you have the kill feed off, you are throwing and there is nothing else to it. 
for minimap rotation, I have this on. I vaguely remember using this setting back when auto execs were really OP on PC. And I remember this being enabled through the auto exec before they implemented it into the game. And I've just been using it ever since. You can play with it off. You can play with it on. For weapon auto cycle on empty, I keep this off. I don't like the game switching weapons for me. Even if I'm running out of bullets, I still think that the game switching weapons for me would just throw me off a lot. And so I just keep it off for that reason, as well as the fact that I'm playing on a mouse and a keyboard. And because I don't really have any restrictions related to my input, I don't have to let the game do anything for me to increase the fluidity of my gameplay. For my auto sprint, I like to keep this off. A small reason why you might want to keep auto sprint off is the fact that it's not possible to shoot while sprinting in Apex Legends. So when I'm actively sprinting and I press down my mouse one to shoot, there's actually a little bit of a delay between when I click and hold my mouse down and when I actually start to shoot. And that's because of the fact that I actually have to transition between sprinting and walking because it's not possible to sprint and shoot at the same time. I like to keep auto sprint off and to just simply hold down my shift key to sprint. But whenever I need to walk to peak corners, I have the freedom to be able to do that. For double tap sprint, I keep this off. Again, I like having control over my movement and I don't like the game doing things for me. For jetpack control, this is a Valkyrie setting. Hold on, let me switch to Valk. So whenever you are using hold for your jetpack control, all you have to do to activate your jetpack is just press and hold spacebar whenever you're in the air. Wings up. And then to cancel your jetpack, you just let go. All you have to do is just let go of your spacebar. At the end of the day, I like to use hold over toggle with my jetpack control because the movement just feels so much more fluid to me and it feels so much more right to me. Being able to press and hold down on my spacebar to actively use my jetpack and they're just simply letting go of it to fall. It just feels more right to me. I'm sure that there's a lot of great Valk players that use toggle and if toggle feels more comfortable to you, then go for it. But but if I were to recommend one of the two, I would definitely choose hold. For my incoming damage feedback, I have it on 2D and this is because of the fact that 3D and both 2D and 3D just produce too much visual clutter for me. 2D is enough for me to know where people are and where they're shooting me from. I don't really see a need to use 3D. If you like using 3D and if it actively benefits you while you're playing, then by all means use it. But I use 2D because I don't like the extra visual clutter that 3D brings. For taking damage, closes death box or crafting menu, I have this off and I will not budge on having this setting off. You have to have it off. If you are trying to armor swap in the middle of a fight and they hit even one bullet on you, you're basically not able to armor swap. It's really annoying. For hop up, pop up, I keep this off. This basically is just a little menu on the bottom right of your screen that shows you what hop up you're using. I know what every hop up does. And if there's a new hop up, I just go into the firing range and study it. So I don't really need that. It makes my UI look much more clean when I have this off. For my streamer mode, I usually keep this off. Uh, and that's just because I like to see the names of people in the kill feed as well as the names of people that kill me. However, there actually are reasons to keep this on all. And I'm actually gonna hop in a game real quick to demonstrate that. All right, let's talk about it. So in the kill feed, you can see how Valkyrie 7609 just down Bloodhound 5224. If I were to pull up to that fight, I would know that the Bloodhound in that fight had gone down and that because of the fact that they had gone down in that fight, that they would very, very likely be low. And that allows me to single them out and to get the easy re-knock on that third party. For my anonymous mode, I personally prefer to keep this enabled because I like my name hidden uh, whenever I'm playing. For usage sharing, I have this disabled. No specific reason, I just don't like having it on. For my performance display, I usually keep it off because I like my UI being clean and I like my game looking minimalistic, but I will turn it on if I'm lagging to see why I'm lagging or how much I'm lagging. I don't have club invites enabled because I don't have any friends. And for reticle, I use my launch options to configure this. I actually don't use the in-game thing. We'll go over that in a bit. I don't use any accessibility settings uh, other than Tritonopia, but that was before custom reticles were a thing. I just play on default now. All right, let's go over my mouse and keyboard settings next. So my mouse sensitivity is a pretty complicated topic and I could make like three videos dedicated to this. 
if you're wanting to know exactly what my sensitivity is at any given time, I'm going to tell you guys how to do that at the end of this video. For my mouse sensitivity at the time of recording this video, it is on 800 DPI 1.5. However, this is subject to change at literally any moment. I will bounce between 800 DPI 1.2 and 800 DPI 2.6. That is the range of sensitivities that I use. I guess the only thing that doesn't change with my sensitivity is the fact that I don't use any ADS multipliers. I just keep everything on 1.0 and I honestly don't plan on ever changing that. Again, I have a lot of videos planned on the subject of sensitivity, so don't worry, we're going to talk more about this later. For mouse acceleration, I keep this off. If I wanted to use mouse acceleration, I would use a third-party software that actually does the job right, and that is good, and not this curve that they have in the game. For mouse invert, I have this off. I have no clue how anybody can play with this on. If you do, leave a comment so that I can give you my eternal respect. All right, let's talk about my keybinds, because these get to be a little weird. So. For my movement binds, I have W, S, A, and D. These all are default. I use left shift to sprint. I use space to jump. And I use hold to crouch on left control. I have toggle crouch on seven, which was just a random key that I picked so that I could crouch behind res beacons whenever I res my teammates. As far as I know, that's not possible to do with hold to crouch unless I'm just stupid. But I use toggle crouch to res teammates and that's about it. The reason why I prefer hold to crouch over toggle is because I like the fluidity of my movement. The act of pressing down the control key allows me to crouch and the act of letting it go allows me to uncrouch as opposed to separating that into two separate inputs. I don't like the idea of having to fully press the control key to crouch and then fully press the control key again to uncrouch. I just, it just disgusts me. You can use that setting if you want, if you personally prefer that. I know that Fortnite has toggle crouch enabled by default, I'm pretty sure. So if you come from a game like that, it's perfectly reasonable to use that. But I just don't personally prefer to use it because I hate it. For my secondary uh, forward movement bind, I have down scroll and that's for tap strafing. Uh, tap strafing looks like this. And then I have my up scroll for jumping, for bunny hopping like this as well as for zipline movement. The reason why I use scroll down is for some reason, whenever I am making the motions that are necessary for tap strafing, it's much easier for my brain to input the idea of scrolling down as opposed to scrolling up. And the same kind of an idea applies whenever I am doing zipline movement. The way that I move my mouse to perform this movement is much better suited to scrolling up for me personally. If you use scroll down for jumping, and scroll up for tap strafing, then more power to you. I just have a very weird brain. For my weapons and abilities, I have my tactical ability on E, my ultimate ability on Q, and my interact and pickup on F. The reason why these keybinds look so weird is because I came from Overwatch. So your tactical ability was E, your ultimate was Q, and interact I'm pretty sure was F by default. I can't fully remember. I do know that sprinting with Soldier 76 was on left shift, so that was really easy for me to get used to. Um, but yeah, I just took my binds from Overwatch and put them into Apex when I started playing the game. For my map key, I have it on 6. I don't know why, I just picked a random key one day and it felt good. I pressed this with my index finger. For my toggle fire mode, this is B, which is default. I you For my aiming down sights, I personally prefer to use hold. Again, this is in the name of fluidity for me. I do not like the idea of having to press down on my mouse once to ADS and then press again to un ADS. I just can't process it personally and I would much rather use hold. It just feels so much better to me and it feels so much more intuitive to me. There are people that do have experiences with toggle aim supposedly making their aim smoother. And this is because of the fact that whenever you use toggle aim, you don't have to actively press down on your right click whenever you are ADSing, which means that you aren't exerting that extra tension or extra force on that side of your mouse, which usually causes a lot of shakiness for people. Me personally, if I ever have shaky aim because I'm death gripping my mouse with hold to ADS because I'm pressing my finger into my mouse too hard or whenever I press down on that, it somehow creates too tense of a grip. I personally think that it's a skill issue and that I just need to get better at controlling my mouse or that I need to replace my mouse and find a shape that better suits my hand instead of going to something like toggle ADS to fix that problem. But that's just the way that I think about things. If you use toggle ADS and if you like how smooth your aim feels there, uh, 
then most certainly go for it. I just will never give up the control of hold the ADS in my lifetime. For my melee, I have it on mouse five. This was the melee bind that I used in Overwatch and I ported that over to Apex just like my other binds when I started playing. When it comes to switching my weapons, I use C and V and I actually use my thumb to switch them. The reason why is uh, before I switched to these binds, I actually was using Psycho Weapon on down scroll. But whenever I wanted to learn how to tap strafe with scroll wheel, I had to move that bind from Psycho Weapon to move forward so that I could properly tap strafe. Learning how to use C and V was much more easy for me and it only took me about two weeks as opposed to learning one and two, which I still have bound by the way, just in case I want to learn how to use those. For my holster weapons, I have this on three. For my grenades, I have it on G. For my survival items like heat shields and mobile respawn beacons, I have it on left alt, which I believe is default. And to use my selected health item, which is just the health menu, I have it on five. In terms of specific heal binds, I don't use any. And the only reason why I don't is because I'm lazy and I've never gone out of my way to set up binds for those things, even though I probably should. For my character utility action, I have this on four, which is just a really easily accessible key. And then for inspect weapon, I have it on T. My push to talk is on Z and to message my team in the match, I have it on enter. Let's go to my video settings since I don't play on controller and there are no controller settings for me to show off. For my display mode, I am always playing in full screen for maximum performance. For my aspect ratio, I usually am playing on 16 by 10 at a resolution of 1728 by 1080. The reason why I play at 1728 by 1080 is because it's a nice middle ground. A lot of you guys might know that Lyric or Fade, for example, play on 1680 by 1050, which is the exact same aspect ratio as this resolution. It's the exact same stretch. It looks the same. I love the way that stretched looks, but I don't like the loss of quality because there are less pixels in the resolution. So I picked 1728 by 1080 because it's a nice middle ground between 1680 by 1050 and 1920 by 1080. For my brightness, I keep it on 50%. My field of view is almost always at 110. Unless I switch back to native, I might lower my field of view a little bit. For my FOV ability scaling, I keep this disabled. I'll actually show you guys why I have this disabled really quick. So if I enable FOV ability scaling and I use Octane Stim, my FOV is actually going to increase. It's, go time. it's going to increase and it, then it's going to slowly decrease as my stim runs out. Whenever your FOV changes like that, it makes your sensitivity feel different. And Apex also actually uses a focal scaling system that changes your sensitivity based on what FOV you're on. The reason why I keep this disabled is for the sake of consistency. I don't want using abilities like Octane Stim to mess with my sensitivity or whatever. I would much rather just have everything be the same. For my Sprint View Shake, I have it on minimal. I don't like how my character kind of bobs up and down with it being normal. As you can see by my advanced video settings, I value performance and high frame rate above quite literally everything else. The only thing that I don't have on the lowest possible setting is my texture streaming budget, which I have at medium. I don't really think that there's too much to go over in the audio segment. Here are my audio settings for those of you guys that are curious. All right, so let's go over my launch options and auto exec. So I use dash dev because this apparently was the command that you could use to get rid of um, the annoyingly loud uh, intro screen back when that was a problem. So I've kind of just left that here uh, ever since I started using it. Uh, I use plus FPS underscore max 144. And this is because I cap my FPS at 144. I would much rather cap my FPS at 144, even though I use a 240 hertz monitor, because I'm not actually guaranteed to get 180, 190 or 240 FPS 100% of the time. And personally, I would rather just be locked at 144. It feels good to me. If I want to go higher, I will, and I have experimented with it before, but 144 feels amazing to me, and I don't really see the need to uh, go any higher for this game, considering the fact that it's not optimized enough to hold those high frame rates in the most stable way. Plus, exec auto exec is just to uh, use my auto exec, which is just a giant file with a list of commands that uh, help optimize my game. If you guys want access to my auto exec, it's actually going to be in my Discord. So if you just go join my Discord, which is linked in the description, and then you go to Apex Resources, the file is right here. 
uh, and you guys can uh, download it and use it if you are interested. This command here is just to change my reticle color. It's currently on 375, 375, 375. Uh, this just kind of allows you to break free of the in-game constraints. The rest of these commands that are here, the mat letterbox, aspect goal, and aspect threshold, and cube maps, these are just uh, commands that I use whenever I like to experiment with the 4x3 aspect ratio. Um, these don't really mean anything whenever I play at any resolution other than 4x3, but I just leave them there because they're harmless. For my NVIDIA 3D settings, I just use the Calypto's Latency Guide NVIDIA 3D settings, which are here. I'll leave this linked in the description below. You're just going to click on how to properly install NVIDIA drivers and then scroll down. These are the settings that I use and they are available here if you'd like to copy them. And lastly, for those of you guys that are curious on what my BenQ monitor settings are, I will also leave those in the description for you guys to read and copy it just in case you have something like a BenQ XL2546 or a BenQ XL2546K, both of which are the monitors that I have used while playing Apex. All right, so earlier I mentioned how I would talk about how to keep track of the settings that I change pretty regularly, since I do like to experiment with a lot of different types of settings, and I do like to change things pretty often. I'm going to leave a list of commands uh, for my Twitch chat that will start with an exclamation mark. All you have to do is type those commands in my Twitch chat uh, to see what my sensitivity, my resolution, my field of view, my reticle, uh, and other frequently asked and very easily changeable settings, uh, just in case you're wanting to be up to date on those. With all of that being said though, that's going to bring an end to my settings video. If you guys are confused on anything, or I didn't explain something well enough, or I just uh, missed something outright, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will be happy uh, to answer whatever questions you might have. Again, if you guys are interested in keeping up to date with the settings that I change pretty regularly, uh, you can do that by just simply going into my Twitch chat and uh, using the commands that I uh, update every single time that I change a setting. That's going to be the best way to keep up to date with things like my resolution, sensitivity, field of view, etc. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you made it this far, thank you very much for sitting through that. I really appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one.